Kia ora, hello, I'm Philip Duncan with a special Saturday update on Cyclone Cody, which is now an X cyclone. A little confusing for some people because the X doesn't mean it's no longer a storm. It means it's no longer a tropical fueled storm. The X stands for extra tropical. So we don't make the rules, but it's still a storm. So let's just call it a storm because we all know what that is. So we've got this storm offshore to our north. Latest guidance suggests it's going to come past the eastern side of the North Island and high pressure down here to the south is part of the controlling feature of the system as it moves in. So with the tracking a little bit further to the east, that reduces the severe weather risks across New Zealand, but the marine and coastal and beach risks they are quite significant, all the way from Northland right down to Canterbury and Otago. So we'll talk about that in a moment. But first of all, let's take a look at this. A couple of new model tracks to show you. This is actually from our friends at predictwind.com and we thank them very much for allowing us to share this. GFS on this side, ECM from Europe on the other, showing you the track of the storm as it passes by. Now we'll roll it back up again so you can see it a bit clearer. Both of those systems, both of the models showing the storm in the same place. Let's zoom in a wee bit more. So you can see it's very close to East Cape and Gisborne. Some of that rain that you can see in the map there pushes in. We rock it back and forth to help you sort of clearly see who's most impacted by it. But if we just pause it there, you can see the American model and the European model very, very similar now, showing the center of the storm just offshore. The damaging winds in this portion here, just offshore and just brushing Gisborne, East Cape, Mahia Peninsula. But this is what we we're talking about all week. The storm is tracking from north to south, just like New Zealand is. And so a jog to the west or to the east makes a big difference. And this one's jogged a little bit to the east. That's reduced the severe weather risks over land. But let's take a look at the swells. Again, thanks to our friends at predictwinds.com. So you can see the two models here coming through, both showing some very big swells spreading out, fanning out into the South Island even. So we just reverse that back up again, take another look at it, and you can see it spreads out, it fans out. This one here, the European model, a little bit closer to the North Island showing those swells, but you can see that the uh, predict wind modeling is certainly showing some very big swells coming down, big waves, dangerous beach conditions all the way along the eastern side of both main islands. So that's why this storm is not a fizzer, it's still very much out at sea and it's going to churn up our beaches. So the weather might be absolutely beautiful where you are on the coastline, but out at sea, the storm is going to produce dangerous conditions at the beach from really today through until about Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. So thank you to Predict Wind for those maps just then. Let's take a look now at the forecast. Here is Sunday lunchtime. The storm offshore, the damaging winds in this portion here, which is offshore, but the windy easterlies, you'll feel those in Northland, Coromandel, and really a number of upper North Island areas, upper North Island being north of Lake Topor. So those areas, if you're in a tent, you're going to feel those winds blowing through, especially over the next day or two. As we get into Monday, this is the closest the storm is going to get, but on Monday, I mean. However, the modeling might change a little bit. It might still pull it in closer to New Zealand. There might be some more updates on Sunday that pull it in closer and therefore severe weather risks return again to some areas or it might stay where it is or even further out to the east. But the likely thinking at the moment, tracking just offshore from East Cape, and this is when the waves get as big, they get up to eight meters in this corner up here. That is major, and that could cause serious coastal erosion as well. So with the storm tracking a little further to the east, the rainfall maps have slid out to the east as well. There's still 80, 90, 100 millimeters forecast around Gisborne. So there's still the chance of some floods and some slips and maybe a road closure if it remains like this. And like I say, if the storm tracks a little bit further in, then these rainbow colors all slide to the west and everyone gets a little bit more rain, which we really do need. Because if this storm misses us rain-wise, then all the long-term forecasts you've looked at this month, and it probably doesn't matter from which provider, which forecaster, this month's going to lean drier than average, which means this is the second La Nina in a row that's bringing drier than average conditions to New Zealand. That's why Weather Watch doesn't get as excited as others do about La Nina forming, because we're 
halfway to Antarctica. Uh, a lot of things can change. So on Tuesday, the storm is tracking out to the east. The Chatham Islands are getting it. The big waves, they're coming all the way down and they're coming now into parts of Canterbury and maybe later on even coastal Otago. So it's going to be quite a large system from that point of view. But look, mostly dry across New Zealand on Tuesday. And by Wednesday, the storm's gone. Well, it's just tracking past the Chatham Islands and then it's gone. And then we've got a cooler change coming into the South Island, a cold front coming through there. By the way, up in the tropics, another cyclone potentially around Rarotonga and another one potentially forming around Fiji. And the remnants of what was Cyclone Tiffany now coming out of New South Wales. They've had plenty of rain this summer. Sorry to rub it into the New Zealand farmers and gardeners and those on water tanks who need more rain. This will bring some to the South Island but not much to the north. Before I go, don't forget, we've got all the latest Met Service warnings. Just go to the Weather Watch website, click on Maps and Radars, you'll see warnings in there. And this is the current areas with some watches for wind and rain around that northeastern corner. And of course, that map could easily change in the coming hours. That's all from me. Our next update will likely be on Monday, but we'll have news updates, of course, at weatherwatch.co.nz and ruralweather.co.nz.